Hey everybody, it's Dirt Bike Channel, and today we're gonna to be talking about a pre-ride checklist that I pretty much go through every time, and maybe you should too. So admittedly, some of this stuff might sound pretty basic, but I've been doing this for a while now, and I've come to find out that a lot of people aren't doing even the most basic things when they ride. We're so excited, we just get the bike out of the truck and wheel it out, throw our gear on, and boom, down the road, trying to like ride a wheelie through fifth gear or something like that. But there's some little things on our bikes that we can check right here before we get, I usually do it before I get geared up, uh, that can make your day a lot better. Now, I also will say that a lot of this stuff, like my pre-ride checklist starts at the, at the end of this ride. So I'll go for a ride today and I'll start my next pre-ride checklist by washing the bike and checking a lot of these things over, basically everything I'm gonna show you right now. Then when I come out here to the trail, to the trailhead, there are some things that I have to go through every time and just make sure that we're all good to go. Let's uh, kind of get into them right now. The first thing I wanna talk about, and item number one, not that this is necessarily in any particular order, is tire pressure. Believe it or not, I have met a ton of people who don't know what their tire pressure is. This is critical. If you run tubes, you can email me. There's a certain amount, you probably need a certain amount. I'm running tubeless on this, <clears throat> and so I'm just going to check my low pressure. I'm actually gonna release some air. One of the things that I do with my setup, kind of my thing is I will put in, before I leave, I'll put in more air than I need, and that way when I get to the trailhead, <laughs> I'm just dropping pressure out to the exact amount that I want. Um, but I always, always carry some sort of a bike. You can buy these on Amazon anywhere. I always carry this with me because I can do high pressure, low pressure. It's so much faster and easier to just put one of these, you know, put your bike pump on here and get your tire pressure good. Do not ever ride, ever, ever, ever ride without checking your tire pressure, at least at the beginning of the day. It is critically important to the function of everything, traction, suspension, all these things, and you're doing yourself a major disservice if you're not checking it right before the ride. The next thing I wanna talk about is bleeding your forks. Now, typically there's a bleeder up here on your fork. It's not the clicker here in the middle, it's this other one. I struggle to find good lighting for this, but let's see if we can listen and hear if any air comes out. Now listen, if I can get that out. Just a little thing there. Okay, so that one, that one, and we don't need to take this screw all the way out. We just need to take it to where the air escapes. It was really difficult to hear. I doubt you guys could hear that. And then I just put that down. We wanna release the pressure because air, we get air build up in here, the air expands and contracts. And sometimes you can get some negative pressure in here. We just want to release the pressure to get the pressure inside the fork the same as the air pressure on the outside out here for this to work properly. So this one, this one wasn't bad at all. Issue at all. You can install fork, fork bleeder caps. Some people do that uh, to make this a little easier. The downside to that is sometimes they can get dirty and get stuck. But anyway, bleed your forks. Need to check our air filters. This one is clean. It's been on one ride. There's a little bit. There's a little bit of like a little uh, like seeds in here, but it isn't actually dusty uh, because the last time I rode it, no one was with me. So check your air filters. Make sure that it's clean. Make sure that it's fitted properly. It needs to be fitted properly. Otherwise, you're going to suck dirt into the motor. So don't ask me how many times I've seen people with an improper air filter, improperly installed air filter, ruin their day check for loose bolts. Holy cow, if I had a nickel for all the time, I've seen bolts come out of bikes. And this is something you can go around with a T-handle or a nut driver or something. A lot of these are eight millimeters and 10, millim eight, 10 and 12 millimeter bolts. So it doesn't take like a ton of tools to just go around and, and eyeball things. Like literally just go around the bike and eyeball things and make sure that you don't have a bunch of bolts that are just gonna fall out. I do this a lot during my wash procedure, um, but I just kind of eyeball things and just make sure everything is tight um, because it's easy to do. It's, and these bikes rattle a lot, so a lot of times bolts can start to work their way loose. See, like you, even your, uh, this probably isn't enough of a, but I'll check these bolts up here. Anyway, the point is go around, check for loose bolts, uh, and uh, you'll be glad you did. 
right before the ride, I just want to take one good look at my chain. Make sure that if, the, if your chain has a master link, put eyes on that master link and make sure that the clip is on. This particular chain doesn't have a master link, but I just want to make sure it's good. One, I want to make sure I'm kind of within spec. This bike takes a little bit more chain free play than some of my other bikes, according to the manual. So I know I'm, I'm within spec. This chain is a little bit loose to my liking, but it's not going to fall off. And I just want to make sure it's in working order, especially if it's got that master link before I take off. I'm fully aware that some of you guys are going to laugh that I put this in a YouTube video, but check your fuel. I have seen so many times when people forget to top off their bike and then we get halfway through a ride and they realize that they're almost out of fuel. It's one of the reasons why I bring a toe strap in my pack or on the bike. To check your fuel because that's such an easy thing to do and sometimes people miss it. Bonus tip while we're here. Uh, check to make sure that your vent hose is not pinched. I was recently on a ride when this vent hose became pinched. And what happened was it creates, if it can't vent here, then the bike, the motor creates a vacuum inside of this. We were, it was on a carburetor bike. There was a vacuum inside of here and then the bike wouldn't run. And we spent all this time in the carburetor trying to like figure it out and do all this stuff and wondering if it was the fuel petcock and all these things. And then when we finally, we finally realized it was our fuel, the fuel vent hose had become pinched and it was causing the bike to stop. And we were in, a, we were a long ways away. So just a little bonus tip for you, make sure that your vent hose is not pinched. Before I leave the truck, I want to give one last check to my throttle and make sure that this thing has some free play and that it snaps back. If you've had a digger and maybe your bar end gets slammed in here, or maybe you've broken your throttle tube. If this thing is like, if it doesn't snap back, it's easy. It's easier for you to get whiskey throttle or for the bike to stay on power when you need it to be off power. And that can get you into some big troubles. It's much easier to kind of clean this up and fix this. If you've got some tools by the truck than with your trail pack out there in the trail. So it's another thing that I just want to see. Do I have correct throttle uh, operation here before I go? Let's talk a second about bike fluids. This Honda has a sight glass window. I can see my oil is clean and it's in the right spot. Um, I want to go through and I want to check my radiator. Um, just check any fluids or, around the bike and make sure that the bike has uh, that it's topped off in all those areas. You don't want your bike, you don't want your motor to blow up. You don't want the bike to overheat. If your bike doesn't have a sight glass like this one, it's a little bit harder to check this stuff. And so you gotta be really good with your maintenance logs. I do like this because you can actually physically see in there. Some people don't like these because they're like, oh, that sight glass can get broken. You know, a lot of things could happen. I, I probably would rather have a sight glass than not. Uh, so check the fluids on your bike and just double check that you're good there. Last thing here, I just want to do a level set on my riding pack and make sure that I have everything I need. First and foremost, I want to make sure that I have water uh, and maybe some snacks. Second, I want to make sure I have tools. I'm going to put my tool kit in here. I want to make sure I have emergency preparedness stuff. I carry a beanie in here. I've got a toe strap. I've got uh, first aid type stuff. There's a lot of different things that I have in here, a way to start a fire, some, some different things. So level set, uh, you know, I'm always carrying like a saw because I like to do trail maintenance and things like, like that. So maybe you need to carry some extra fuel, whatever it is, just go through your pack and make sure that you've got it all. I carry also a Zolio GPS communicator, extra gloves. Obviously I'm carrying my camera point of view camera, um, because I do a lot of that. Um, I carry some ibuprofen in my pack just in case, you know, a lot of times you have a bonk or a thing and you maybe want to get ahead of the swelling. So that's my level set. Um, obviously then I'm going to gear up and go. Sometimes I'll do this after I'm geared up. But the point is these are all things that I have to do before I'm ready to ride. So I'm fully aware to some people that this may sound like a lot of stuff to go through, but this doesn't have to be like this sheet that you get out. These are just things that I'm thinking about kind of common sense things. And like I said, a lot of them have come just by me washing the bike after the ride and just kind of going through some of my maintenance things. And then these are just last second things that I'm doing. It doesn't have to take you a long time. Your riding pack takes as much as anything. Once you get out to the trail, I definitely want to make sure my tire pressure is good. I want to make sure that my tank is full, you know, bolts and stuff. I've probably already done that, but it's not bad to give a once over. It's also not bad to just glance over at your buddy's bike. You don't want to be that guy that says like, hey, what's your maintenance records? But if you just get develop an eye for like noticing a, that a bolt is halfway out on a bike, you'd be like, hey, dude, you, you, better, you better check that. It's much easier to hit the things at the trail. 
um, than it is to lose a kickstand or lose a brake lever or you know have the chain fly off out in the middle of nowhere so find a way to present it to them where you don't come out come across as jerk but they'll probably thank you they'll be like oh thank you so much for uh you know showing that to me or pointing that out to me so anyway just some fun things to uh, think about hey if you want to support what we're doing here here at dirt bike channel one of the best ways you can do it is use my links to rocky mountain atv there's a link down in the video description or over on my website dirtbikechannel.com if you click that link before buying anything from rocky mountain atv I get a referral bonus and it really, really helps me out. It doesn't cost you anything. Uh, so use that link. Um, if you have questions, email me, kyle at dirtbikechannel.com. I'll get back to you. Uh, this Honda 450 will be a sweepstakes bike later this year. Um, I will be having a sweepstakes starting March 1st of 2022. We'll be giving away the Gas Gas EC300 as well as my son's uh, KTM 65SX. So stay tuned for that. Those are also great ways to support the channel. Um, and yeah. That's uh, pretty much what I've got for you today. Hopefully everyone is having a wonderful time, staying safe out there and leaving a single track. Thanks.